Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. I hope you're all doing well. Today we have got a couple of huge leaks concerning the upcoming Intel 10900K CPU in terms of its temps as well as the power output. And these things are looking to be running seriously hot. We've got some screenshots of Ida64 running stress tests on it. And also we've got some leaked specs for the GA102 3080Ti from NVIDIA, thanks to YouTuber Moore's Law is Dead, who's got some juicy, juicy details on the upcoming Ampere architecture. We're going to get fired into all of that in just a moment. Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry, because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You receive your key within seconds, and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen, and all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. First up, let's take a look at that stress test run on the upcoming Comet Lake Intel i9 10900K, which is the 10 core 20 threaded CPU. So in the famous words of my buddy Brian from Bad C Tech, let's go. As you can see on this screenshot, we've got the full IDA64 uh, up and running. We've also got GPU Z open, which is not really going to be of any concern to us. We've also got hardware info and the task manager up where it is showing the 10900K processor running at 4.77 gigahertz at 100% utilization. So basically it's pushing that full turbo boost of 4.8 gigahertz across all eight cores. This screenshot was originally posted over on the Weibo forums, which is uh, Asian, I think it's either Chinese or Korean um, uh, tech forum, and then it was also posted over on Twitter, and now it's been circulating around through the news websites for the past six hours or so. So let's go over this screenshot and see what kind of information we can glean from the benchmark posted on the Weibo forums. As you can see in Ida64, he was running the FPU stress test, which is definitely the more complex of the test compared to just stressing out the CPU. It might not represent all workloads that you might um, typically see running on a PC, but it is definitely a kind of a worst case scenario. So that is something worth keeping in mind. And we also can assume that he is uh, maybe running at stock voltages, but he might have done some tweaks there, but I'm going to go ahead and probably assume that he has not. And on this stress test for the screenshot, he was running the benchmark for 47 minutes and 41 seconds. So that is plenty of time to, you know, kind of determine what kind of temps this thing is putting out over long period workloads. And he did also mention that he was using a 240 millimeter water cooler, an all-in-one cooler. It doesn't mention the brand or anything like that. But a 240 millimeter all-in-one should be able to, you know, adequately cool a CPU running at its stock settings and boosting up to 4.8 gigahertz, even over an extended period of time. But we can see that the performance on this thing, as far as the uh, temperatures are concerned, is that it is running ridiculously hot. It is running at a maximum, as you could see here, of 93 degrees Celsius. And over the 47 uh, minute benchmark run and the uptime on the PC was a total of 51 minutes, his average temperature was 87 degrees Celsius and the minimum was down at 79 degrees Celsius. So it seems like if you're doing any sort of serious workload, rendering out a video or probably streaming and gaming, at the same time on a 10900K CPU, even using a 240 millimeter all-in-one cooler, you're going to be pumping out some serious heat in your PC and you would very likely want to get into uh, undervolting your processor and trying to get um, the best temps possible over a long period of time, especially if you're going to be doing stressful workloads like this. And, you know, what kind of voltages are going to be required to be hitting, you know, even like overclocks over five gigahertz, it definitely remains to be seen, but I have to assume if you are going to be getting into overclocking, you're definitely going to need probably more than a 250 millimeter all-in-one. You're going to need something like a 360 millimeter or maybe getting into a custom uh, custom loop or something like that if you want to be able to get manageable temps on the 10900K. During this test run, we can also get a look at the power output on the 10900K CPU. You could see that at a maximum, it was putting out 235 watts of power and an average of 233 watts during the 47 minute test run on Ida64, which is just ridiculous for uh, a CPU. I mean, that's like getting into like GPU territory of the amount of power output on this 10 core monster from Intel 
um, which is probably going to need like LN2 to hit something like that 5.4 gigahertz overclock that we saw um, the other day. Last week, there was a, a leaked um, screenshot of it running at 5.4 gigahertz, uh, a benchmark actually. So uh, something like that is probably not going to be attainable by the vast majority of people. But, you know, with undervolting and stuff like that, we'll have to see, you know, 4.8, 5 gigahertz, what can actually be done with some lower voltages, as this is likely running over 1.3 volts. Um, and then, you know, some early motherboard BIOSes can even push uh, the CPUs further than what is really required. I've had that happen to me last year with the 9900K when that came out. Um, initially, I was using an EVGA motherboard, and there was an issue where it was putting on more voltage than was actually required, causing the system to crash because it was running its regularly over 1.4 volts, even at stock. So you really had to get in there and undervolt the thing, or and then eventually they did release a BIOS update, which went ahead and addressed that. But no doubt, these 10-core CPUs from Intel are going to be running very hot. They're going to require a lot of power because they just really haven't done anything in the past several years in terms of efficiency. They're still running on 14 nanometer. Meanwhile, we've seen AMD come out with 12 nanometer. Now they're on seven nanometer and already working on the five nanometer process for upcoming AMD CPUs in the next couple of years. While Intel is still struggling and still putting out these very inefficient chips that are running very hot and yeah, they just really haven't innovated in a long time and throwing another two cores and four threads onto the same package like they did with the 9900K is, you know, it's obviously going to run hotter, even though they're very likely using a soldered TIM here. Um, the soldered TIM that we saw in the 9900K was garbage and people still uh, ended up delitting and, re and redoing their CPUs uh, on those things with liquid metal and stuff like that. So I have a feeling we're probably going to see the same thing around here with the 10900K, uh, unless they've upgraded their, their solder or something like that, but it doesn't really appear that it is, or they just can't really get these things to run cool with the current inefficient process that they are working on, sadly. Next up, as I mentioned at the top of the video, we have yet another leak, this time concerning NVIDIA and their upcoming Ampere GPUs, specifically the 3080 Ti or the GA102 GPU, which we are expected to get some details on in a couple of days at GTC 2020, although we probably won't see these cards coming out until the third or fourth quarter, at least based on the current rumors. And we know that TSMC just recently got a big order from NVIDIA to be able to start working on these processors. So we'll definitely see them probably sometime this year, but it's not going to be like over the summer or anything. It's going to be definitely towards uh, the end of the year. So the Source of this leak is the YouTube channel Moore's Law is Dead, who's currently sitting at 40,000 subscribers. He posted this video up yesterday, and uh, I watched the full 30, 30 plus minute video, and he definitely seems extremely knowledgeable, genuine, and, you know, the information he's providing seems to be legit. I mean, he could be completely lying and talking out of his ass from an educated point of uh, point of view, but I'm going to just go ahead and say based on what I watched and based on listening to him and just my gut instinct, I trust what he is saying. Whether or not he was led on by the person that gave him this information is a possibility. But I do believe for his own part that he is being very genuine with the information provided in his video. So we're going to go over uh, some of the key bullet points which he outlines in his video. If you want to watch the full 30 plus minute video though, I will link to his channel, uh, his video down in the description below. And he's also got very convenient time timestamps uh, in the description as well. So if there's a certain thing you want to learn more about, you can go ahead and skip around like that. So very good video, good watch, something definitely worth watching all the way through uh, if you have not already. But concerning the information that he provided in his video, we've got some uh, screenshots here over on Hexus. Um, the first up, you can see his thumbnail with this 3080 Ti. Now, obviously, this is not what it is going to look like exactly, but he does mention in here that the current engineering sample, which is going around, and it's worth noting that it is an engineering sample, was using a three-fan cooler design that looked very similar to the Touring RTX card. So think something like that, but with a three-fan cooler. Whether or not that's going to make it into the final production does remain to be seen, but at least in the engineering samples, it was running a three-fan heatsink, which would be very awesome to see NVIDIA do something like that on the final production run. In his video, he mentions that it is running two 8-pin power connectors on the engineering sample, but that could be knocked down to an 8-pin plus a 6-pin 
on the final production sample as this was an engineering sample and on the original engineering sample for Turing, those were actually running three 8-bin power connectors, which is not out of the norm for engineering samples to be pushing more power to uh, test these cards for various different things. So on the final card, we'll probably see like an eight and a six pin, but on this engineering sample, it was two eight pin power connectors. And as he said, these cards should use less energy than the Turing equivalents. As far as the rear I.O. is concerned, really nothing too drastically different from the previous generation. Three DisplayPort 2.0 connectors, one HDMI 2.1, as well as a USB-C, which you could use with VR headsets and the like. And it is also running on the PCI interface of 4x16. Um, he does also mention that NVIDIA is using their own monitoring software, which does not tell you specifics. He specifically mentions that in the video because um, he didn't want to mention exactly where the leak came from, but based on what he said, it kind of sounds like it came from the software department at NVIDIA. And when they're giving these products, they are pretty much locked down completely and they're not really able to even see exactly what card um, you know they're working on and things like that. Everything is very much locked down. So they can't open up something like GPU Z and be able to see things like the die size or the memory vendor or any of that type of information you might see. Um, you know, closer to when these cards are actually coming out. So when they're working on these cards, they're very much working in the dark with some very, very minimum, um, inf very minimum, minimal information um, for what a what they're actually working on in software for the upcoming Ampere GPUs. He also goes on to say that specifically with the GA102 with the performance specifics that it is rumored to be 5,376 CUDA cores on the full die pushing 220 to 230 watts and that's based on uh, previous rumors and it is looking like that is likely true based on the information that he provided in his video. He also says that the card boosts ob over 2.2 gigahertz and even a cutdown card should be able to exceed 21 teraflops and that this is going to have 18 gigabit per second memory with 864 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, which is just over 40% more bandwidth than the 2080 Ti. He also says that the GA103 and GA104 could boost to 2.5 gigahertz, which is not confirmed, but it is expected and that the GA102 hits a massive of CPU bottleneck at 1080p and 1440p, and it looks like 4K could become the new mid-range standard here. In terms of actual performance, he says that the worst case scenario for the 3080 Ti is 40% faster rasterization performance over the 2080 Ti in 4K, and that is in unfavorable games. Meanwhile, in typical games, you'll see at least 50% faster performance and up to 70% faster in certain games. So if that information holds up to be true, that's I'm absolutely sold on grabbing a G102 graphics card. I actually had a dream last night about these cards and that the prices were like ridiculously low, like $500 for a 3080 Ti. Now, obviously that's not gonna happen, but as you can say, I'm a little excited about it if I'm literally dreaming about graphics card prices being low. Um, but yeah, for me, as a 4K 120 Hertz gamer, you know, seeing that it's gonna be like 40, anywhere 40 to 50%, maybe even 70% faster uh, in certain titles would definitely pique my interest. And I would be a buyer day one on one of these cards as I don't think I'm gonna get sampled. Uh, Nvidia kind of wrote me off quite a while ago for whatever reason for talking shit about ray tracing and stuff so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to pony up the money and buy one of these cards and i definitely will be at least for the ga 102 3080 ti i'll be picking one of these up for 4k gaming these sound amazing if the information you know holds up to be true obviously you should always take any type of leak or rumor with a grain of salt but based on what he's saying it's pretty darn exciting we've also got some other information concerning ray tracing performance which we've actually already seen it's been kind of leaking out over the past uh, like week or so that these cards are going to be incredible when it comes to ray tracing. I even saw an early leak that said there was going to be no performance impact with ray tracing, which is definitely BS, but it does sound like they are going to be much, much better, actually four times better than what Turing has, which as he mentions here, the amount of RT cores is not what is changing necessarily, but each are becoming substantially more performant. He says Ampere RT cores can process intersections four times faster than Turing. So literally, if you just made the 2080 Ti have the Ampere's RT cores, it would theoretically do ray tracing four times faster because the Ampere RT cores themselves are just that much better. He goes on to say that when you account for the additional SMs, L2 cache, and doubling of tensor cores for denoising, low-end Ampere even, something like a 3060, could run circles 
around high-end touring and games with ray tracing on. He even says that in Minecraft RTX that the 3080 Ti is four to five times faster than a Titan RTX. And because of the fact that it's four times faster, he says that Touring had to choose between Global Illumination, Shadows, and Reflections, which we saw usually a game might have one, maybe two features built into it. If in something like the Quake 2 demo, which had everything going on in it, the performance was absolutely in the toilet. But he says specifically that Ampere can now do all of these at the same time with better fidelity and less of a performance loss, which sounds amazing. Like everything about this sounds incredible. If Nvidia is doing all of this, then I think a lot of people are going to be excited about these cards, seeing the second generation RT cores and Tensor cores and all that stuff, having more of them, having, you know, 50% plus performance increases in 4K on the GA102. Um, these cards are sounding really impressive. I just really hope that the information um, that Moore's Law is Dead put out there is 100% accurate because I want nothing more than for this information to be true. But of course, we won't really know until these cards are well, close to being available. And hopefully we get more details at GTC in a couple of days from Jensen. Hopefully all of this stuff just gets uh, confirmed for us and we get some really exciting news because everything here sounds fucking awesome and I'd love to buy one, honestly, but please let this be true. Um, but if you're excited about this, let me know down in the comments below. Also, let me know your thoughts on those extremely hot uh, 10900K CPUs, almost hot as my Scandinavian cousins. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get on out of here, guys, though. I look forward to your thoughts, opinions, everything down in the comments below. As always, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Ta-ra.